Welcome to the Discovery Bible Study here at the Beltline Church of Christ. We're glad you joined us. We are in Romans chapter 2. You can be opening your Bibles there. We're continuing this uh, a series of lessons through the book of Romans. If you're uh, coming to us in person, I want you to know starting today, we are also beginning a study on Romans in person. So whether you're here <laughs> online or coming to the building on Wednesdays, uh, we're trying to study the same things. And there's so much good stuff uh, right here for us in this great, great book. I think one of the elders said a study of Romans should be required for every Christian, yeah. and I think that's probably right. Uh, but we're going to dive into the first 11 verses of Romans chapter 2, and so grab your Bibles, follow along with Trey as he reads from the New Living Translation, Romans 2, <clears throat> 1 through 11. All right. If you'll remember, the end of chapter 1 is talking about lots of uh, things that, that people have fallen into, and so... This is almost in response to the first part of chapter 2. In the original, there's no chapter 2s or verses or anything. And so <laughs> right. We're just continuing this thought. <clears throat> you may think you can condemn such people, but you're just as bad, and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself, for you who judge others do these very same things. And we know that God in his justice will punish anyone who does such things. Since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same things? Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? But because you're stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil for the Jews first and also for the Gentile. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. All right. God does not show favoritism. End of <laughs> I love right. it. Uh, good stuff. I, I just want to reiterate what Trey said just a second ago. Really, chapter 2 is a continuation of what we had in chapter 1. He finishes by talking about all kinds of unrighteousness and evil and covetousness and malice and this whole list. Uh, we go back to talking about the homosexuality that we mentioned last week and so many other sins that are, that are all connected. And then he says, okay, you are without excuse because you're doing the same things. So I, I want to make sure we're connecting these two chapters because they absolutely are, and we don't want to miss uh, the heart at what uh, Paul is saying to us here. Right. But that's for free. I won't charge you for that at all. Uh, let's dive into our questions and see what God has for us. Keith, what's question number one? Question number one, what do we learn about God from these passages? What do we learn about God from these passages? Uh, I feel like I say I cheat every time, but uh, and I'm going to kind of explain my thought pattern with this, and that kind of scares me whenever I say that out loud. I'm going to verse 1 and verse 11. Okay. I'm reading this way. For God shows no partiality, therefore I have no excuse. Okay. And thinking that, that God is looking at me, God is looking at all of us, and God has a plan, God has a purpose for all of us. God knows how we should live our life. God knows how we should treat others. God knows how we should pray, how we should help the homeless, how we should help the needy, how we should take care of our family. God knows what all we need to be doing. And he's laid all that out for me. It's like an idiot can sit here and read. It's like, oh, God wants me to do this, this, this. And it's like, so I sit back and say, well, I'm not going to do this, this, this. I'm going to do this and this, this. I have no excuse. God has told me what he wants me to do. And I sit back and say, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. So I have no excuse. God looks at me. God judged me according to what he has told me he expects from me. Yeah. And I know I ran all the way around the tree on that one. No, but, you're right. But that's... Well, that's and, my answer, I'm you know, to. just to chase that partiality rabbit a little further around the tree, uh, you know, the whole this whole section is about how God shows no partiality. Right. E even in, uh, in in verses seven and eight, or six, seven, and eight, He's going to render according to what we have done. Yeah. It's not about your pedigree. 
It's not about your, uh, you're a 17th generation Church of Christ and your granddaddy was a minister. That's fantastic. That's a great step up for you, but that is not going to save you. And if you're a first generation Christian, uh, there's no difference between you and, and somebody else. And, and not only is this a, uh, you know, there's no difference in race, there's no difference in any of these things, it's also there's no difference in your, in your standing with God. As long as we are faithful to Jesus, we are going to stand before him justified at the end of time. And anybody has the, the ability to do that. Uh, anybody, uh, regardless of social background, regardless of race, regardless... Everybody has an opportunity to stand right before God, so, and, and, and that's standing, huge. Yeah, and Paul standing here talking to Jews who I'm sure at that time felt like, man, I, my family is, is big. It's like, oh, we're good. Mm -hmm. And he's there saying, no. Yeah, God's looking at you just as He's doing everybody else, and you got to treat everybody else the same way. You, you can't think you're so much better than everybody else. Right. We're all lost. We're all sinners. Right. And without God, we're lost permanently. And, and it reminds me of what Jesus or John said: God is able to raise up children from Abraham from the very rocks of the ground. <laughs> yes. That's not where our standing is. No. Our standing is only in Jesus. And if you're trusting in anything else, you're standing on the wrong thing. The death, burial, and resurrection. That's right. That's it. That's right. Um, so kind of along the same lines when you think <clears throat> about uh, verse 4, would, would you read verse 4 in, in a different version? Yours was different from ours on a lot, the ESV on a lot. Yeah. Uh, are, are do you... Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Right. Okay. And so the New Living says, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? And what I wanted to point out is um, the idea of don't you, or the expectation that you realize this, mm -hmm. you know, that basically the, the, it's like an attorney before a, a jury, you know, saying, okay, we've laid out all this evidence. Do you get it? Do you not see how good he is to you? You know, and I think of John 3, 16, you know, for God so loved the world, he gave, you know, and so he says, look at what God's done. And um, so this is a, a, a question to look at the evidence. Go look at the evidence of what God has done and what God feels for us, feels for you personally, and what he desires for you. These uh, instructions that he's giving and the condemnation that comes to those who refuse it, <clears throat> it's not given from an overlord that's, that's angry and, and bitter right. and, and wants to hurt us. It's, it's from a father who loves us deeply and wants us to, to not only uh, live the, in, in his joy and to enjoy life to its fullest, he wants us to do it in a way that also brings glory and honor to his name so that others know, hey, you know what? I've chosen to be a child of God. I've chosen to follow his way, and his way has fulfilled my life. It has given me all the deepest desires that my heart could, could possibly have. And, and on the um, favoritism part about God, um, I, I think about in Acts 2 when they spoke in tongues and, and they were able to speak the languages of all the different people from every nation on earth. You know, um, just as a comparison, Islam, okay, the Quran cannot be translated into a different language, right? That's the whole, that, that one favored group, you know. They're well, the only ones that get it. Yeah, but wait a second. The truth is that God welcomes everyone, yes. and he loves everyone, no matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter your pedigree, no, no matter who you are, God welcomes you, every nation, every tongue, every tribe. He wants us, and w he, he gives us this, this calling. Look at the evidence. Look at what I've done. Look, look at how much I love you. I'll, I'll, I'll just jump on that a little bit. Three times in this section of Scripture, that word wrath is used. You see it twice in verse 5. You see it again in verse 8. Yeah. I think it's important for us to recognize that, yes, God is a God of love. It, it is his nature. It is his character. It is who he is. But do not, do not mistake uh, this, this. Don't outweigh that with this other because God's also going to unleash his wrath on those who are disobedient, on those who do not follow him, those who do not repent, those that do not obey. And I just, I just think as we think about what this says about God, he, he loves us beyond measure so much that he gives us his son, but there is a day coming when his wrath is going to be revealed on this earth. And if you think you can avoid it by being good, you're, you're resting on the wrong thing. It's not about your goodness, it's about Jesus. And finding your identity, we've talked a lot in the last uh, few months, uh, as far as the sermons go, on identity and finding that identity in Jesus because that's where your security in Christ stands. 
Otherwise, you're reserving yourself for this wrath that is coming. Uh, you can rest assured. It's, it's, as sure as a, it's a sure promise of God that his wrath is coming to the disobedient. Absolutely. The, and and <clears throat> I don't know if this is under God or under uh, what we learn about ourselves, but... Um, well, see, I was thinking about changing <clears throat> the next one, too, but go ahead. Is that okay? Well, well, we can, let's <laughs> go question, ahead. Question, make it official. Well, question, that's number that's number two. Question. The second question is what do we learn about people? What do we learn about people, right. So, so you're jumping to the third question. Oh, did I? Okay. Well, that's okay. But Jump yeah, to yeah, question yeah, okay. two. Okay. What, what about, does this teach what about us about people? people? All right. I want to talk about people for okay. just a second because um, he says you do just the same thing. You are just as bad. And, and you know, we could read this and say, well, I'm, I'm not doing that. I don't, yeah. I don't have that struggle. I don't lust after this or, or you know that, that's not what mine is but I mean he named a lot of things there's probably something up there that you do struggle with number one but the other thing is uh, when we condemn others people for doing these and you do the same things that's the language all right I don't I don't think that he's necessarily meaning you're also a homosexual you're also a, a greedy person okay specific there's but there is something in us that drives us to those sins other than our devotion to God and so um we, we have something that we desire more than God. Right. And that's really, it's exhibited by these particular actions, by these particular sins. Symptoms. And yeah, these are really symptoms, though, of the real issue. And the real issue is that deep down inside, I have not surrendered to Jesus. Right. I have not given myself to him. And so any of this stuff is the same thing. It's all sin. And so it's, it's the same thing in that sense that it's sin. Um, Alfred Adler... <laughs> Okay. A psychiatrist, I shouldn't go to psychiatry, but here I go. Um, he says, everyone has a bottom line. Everyone has something that they look to without which their life would be miserable and unbearable. Okay? And he says, he, he gives four motivational drives. And, and I think that these probably aren't the only four things. I, I think there probably are more things. And maybe even the, you could change the wording of, of how he characterizes these. But he said, power, approval, comfort, control. Power, approval, comfort, control. Which one of those four are you seeking which drive you to these to a sin, to, to whatever sin that is? Right. I mean, we know what our favorite sins are, the sins that we struggle with. shouldn't call it favorite, I guess, but, yeah, but the sin favorite. that we really struggle with right now. Well, what is it motivated by? Power, approval, comfort, or control. Which one are you seeking? That's good. And why aren't you finding all of that in Jesus? Because you can find power, approval, comfort, and control all in Jesus Christ. He, he has all of that. There's mine. I love it. That's, that's mini sermon. Really, that's hey, <laughs> preach on, brother. That's really good stuff right there. I, I like that. Keith, what do you, what do you think? Mine is 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 yes. Everything you just said. Uh, we got to work on a balance. We got God's grace, and then we got God's wrath. We understand pass fail. We understand if we're going to school and we don't do our homework, we don't do our classwork, we're gonna fail. We understand if we don't go to work, we're gonna get fired. We understand. That, Playing football, if you don't score a touchdown, you're going to lose. We understand all these parameters, but then when we come to the gospel, it's like, oh, God's grace, God's love, and God's wrath. And we got to come up with a good balance. Um, I don't know the names of the kids, so let me reference that. But And sometimes you don't want to know an answer when you ask it. But I asked the kids the other day, if, if you died right now, would you go to heaven or hell? And, and it, it really bothered me because over half of them wrote down hell, just right off, just boom, that's mm -hmm. it. And a few of them wrote down, it's like, I'm not sure. And I guess as a youth minister, that really bothers me because it's like, man, what are we teaching the kids? Um, because some of them, it's like, well, God loves me, but yet I stumbled last week, or, or, or I do have sin, or I'm not worthy enough. And I, then I, I look at the Bible, and it's like, we just got to make sure we understand that God loves me. Yes, God's going to be a wrathful, a vengeful God, but as long as I'm walking in the light, there's a middle. And we got to understand, if you're in the middle, you're okay. But we got to make sure we're not this way, not this way. we got to make sure we're right there. And, and we do that by studying God's Word, by living according to God's Word, by being the child that God wants us to be. Mm. And uh, I don't know if I actually answered the question right, but I guess that's, that's where I'm thinking because I don't want us to think that we're saved by our, our works. Because we're not. We're not. Mm. Yeah. But our works show who we follow. That's and right. if I'm not doing good works, I'm not following God. Right. And some of these teenagers say, well, how do I know if I'm saved? Well... Are you living according to the world standards? Are you living according to God's standards? Mm -hmm. What basis are you living your life by? And um, I, f I feel like I've run around the tree twice on that one, but um, I, I just got, I just want to make sure that, that we understand that, that God loves us. God gave his son for us. God, God has given us, God stacked the deck in our favor. Yeah. We just got to make sure we're willing to sit down at his table and play according to his rules. Well, in 1 John 5, 13 says, I can know I have eternal life. Yes. I can know because I have obeyed 
his son. I have done the things he's asked me to do as far as getting into Christ. And now I'm, I'm proving my faith by those good works. You're showing the world your testimony about how you're living your life. That's right. But I'm not saved by those good works. I'm right. saved by Jesus Christ and my surrender, as Trey mentioned earlier, to him. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's huge. It's, it's a big deal. And if somebody asks me, how do I know that I'm right with God? How do I know I'm saved? I go to Galatians 5 uh, in the Fruit of the Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But then you back up from there, and it lists the ones of the flesh Absolutely. of the world. Right. So it's like, so which one am I basing my life on? That's it. Right. That's, a, that's the, you know, how do I stay saved? Well, am I producing this? I mean, yes. is, is this being produced? Are you yeah. producing? Do you that's see right. this in your life? Yes. And if you don't, the change. Start. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, that's exactly what Paul is saying. Don't yeah. you get it? Yeah. Look at what God's done. It's supposed to lead you to repentance. Yes. When you see what is available to you, when you see how good he is in sending his son, when you think about the inheritance that he has for yes. us, right. when you think about the gift of the spirit that he gives everyone who's obedient to him, those kind acts are not just because he's a good God. They are, but it's to lead us to right. something, and right. that is to repentance. Uh, I was listening to a sermon on the way to, to work this morning and was talking about Cornelius. And one of the things that struck me is Cornelius is this really good guy, right? right. He, he has everything, right? He, he's, he's rich. He's the, he's, he, heaven above looks at Cornelius and says, there's a good guy. Yeah, I want that one. Uh, he's a good one. <laughs> and then what does he do? He says, all right, he's so good. Now let's teach him the gospel so that he can be saved. Yeah. Right. right? Yes. So it's not about goodness. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not about that. It's about God's goodness and saying, I want that one. Yeah. And then him responding to that, which is so huge. God's kindness is what leads us to repentance and ultimately to salvation. And, and I just think that is such a huge point. And, and there's so many of them. Lydia is the same thing. She's this good person, but she needs Jesus. You yeah. know, and, and so many Apollos, they, they're the good people. They need Jesus. They're, those are the poster children for, yes. hey, be just be good and God will be enough. But God says, no, it's not enough. Oh. I want my goodness and what I'm going to give you to lead you to something else, and that's eternal life through repentance in Jesus Christ. Look, look at Paul. I love the thought of Paul. He had that letter saying he could kill Christians. And I wonder when. I wonder if he carried that letter with him the rest of his life hmm. or if he walked up. Through, I wonder what happened to that letter because, I mean, he was living his life thinking, I'm doing the best I right. can. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, wait a minute, I'm not. Mm. And he took a whole 180 degree turn and started going the other way. Let me talk about turning around, didn't they? Yeah, day, so. yeah. Turn around. <laughs> There's one See, more I'll verse. Listen. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> verse six. He will render to each one according to his works. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, so, so, what are your works showing? Yes. Uh, what are your works showing? And I hope it's more. And I'm not <clears throat> downplaying the importance of meeting together on Sunday. And Wednesday, and we should do those things. Those should be givens. But what are your works showing beyond attending a church service? Uh, because that's how uh, this whole thing is going to come together. I think that's big. All right, question number three. This is the I will, right? Yes. How will I put this into practice? How will I put this into practice? Go with God, brother. <laughs> <laughs> go, go for it. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that I have no excuses. I, I'm going all back to the first one. Um, I want to make sure I'm a happy person. I've tried to, my grandfather used to always whistle, and, and not that I'm a great whistler, but to me, I want to show the world that, that I'm happy because I know I'm saved. Do I mess up? Oh, yes. I mean, That's an I mess up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, but do I know God loves me and, and I'm, I'm living right? Yes. And um, I don't want to stand in front of God with no excuses on that day. Because I know if I, if I do, God's not going to listen to me. I remember if I ever messed up with my mom, my mom would look at me and she'd always ask me the question, Keith, what did you do? And I'd give an answer and she'd look at me and she goes, Keith? And she wouldn't say nothing. I'd say, oh, okay, all right, this is what I really did. So it's, not, it's like I knew she knew the truth. God knows the truth. God knows everything in my heart and God knows my actions. God knows my thoughts. And I want to make sure I have no excuse. So That's good. That's good. What you got there, Trey? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm just thinking about um, actually, what you were talking about a minute ago about our, our the good works, you know, in Revelation fourteen thirteen uh, says, "I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down: Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on." Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, and their good deeds follow them. They're good. You know, what you do in life matters. It actually does make a difference. We're going to give an account for every idle word we've spoken, for all the things that didn't make any difference you know that didn't matter to anything and how much do we do that you know <laughs> when it when it comes to eternity what matters it's it's the things that we've said you know the things that we've done 
for Christ, because of Christ, because of what he's done for us. And, uh, and so I think that you know, we've, we've got to train ourselves. And, and one thing also is, is this stubbornness that I, I, I try to work on being stubborn. I'm a stubborn person, and so I, I, uh, I catch myself and I say, all right, listen. And is it possible? Because um, you know, what comes with stubbornness is favoritism. Well, this is the group I agree with most. This is the group that I... Well, wait a second. Um, I need to be more open, and I need to, to, to get favoritism, um, you know, uh, bias out, out of my thinking, because that's not who God is. Right. And, and I want to become more like Him, and I want His Spirit to sanctify me into the person that He's called me to be. And so uh, every place I see that in my life... I need to, to be careful. Now, of course, I want to be stubborn about the truth. You know, right, I want to be right, stubborn right. about those. But, and, and so it, it takes evaluation. It takes discernment. And it takes, you know, concentrating. And I think, above all, it takes being in the Word of God. Right. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And so the more I read, the, the more I'll understand, the more faith I'll have and be able to, to catch myself and move in the right direction rather than the wrong. I like it. I look at verse 7. It says, to those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. And so I think for me, it is, it is easier, I won't say easy, it is easier for me to do good once in a while. Yeah. Right? So hey, I, 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 did, I did a good thing. But he says, I need you to be patient in doing good. That means you got to keep doing good. I, I'm real willing to do good for you once or twice, but don't, don't, don't mess with my schedule, right? That's right. Don't, 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 don't take away the, the things that I'm comfortable doing. Right. But no, he says, be patient in continuing, basically, I think is the idea here, in continuing to do those good works. And so that, that becomes the challenge. Uh, I'll do good, and then someone will hurt my feelings, and then I don't want to do good anymore, right? <laughs> right. Uh, or I'll do good, and, and, and it feels really good, but then I get wrapped up into myself. And, right. and, and so I would just, I want to be patient. Oh, that's so hard for me to say. I, I want to be patient in doing what God wants me to do, and that's good works. Um, so that, that's kind of, that's the kind of I will for me. I, I will try to, with all that I have in me, uh, showered in prayer, be more patient in my good works. You were turning to something. What you got? There? I was just thinking of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, 14. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, take tender care of those who are weak, and be patient with everyone. Yeah. And sometimes that's the same person. <sighs> yeah. All of that is yeah. the same guy. You know, I need to warn them. And they're going to continue to do something that I recognize. And so I need to warn them again. I need to encourage them because it's going to hurt their heart. It's going to break their heart when they realize... Oh, yeah, I've fallen right back into it. So encourage them. Take care of them. Build them back up. You know, lead them along. This is discipleship. This is yeah. what true Christianity is, is, is bearing with one another, being patient, recognizing, I know I'm not perfect, and so who am I to write someone off that, that God has called his child? Right. And so I'm going to be patient. I'm going to just keep on warning, keep on loving, keep on bearing with, keep on trying. And, and, and you know, uh, as, he, as he said, you know, those who are seeking uh, glory and honor and immortality. You know, which way are you looking? Yeah. Is your face set at heaven? Yeah. Are you Are you going in the direction of heaven? Or are you going a different direction? Yeah. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Question number four, Keith. Uh, who do you know that needs to hear this? And who that else? verse kind of goes right. I don't want to steal your thunder, but that verse goes right into it because don't be. I guess I have some of your thunder. Take, take it, man. Steal <laughs> it. Don't be timid this week. Step out of your comfort zone. Find somebody who needs to hear this or something else and talk to them about God's Word. Just call somebody and say, hey, brother, hey, sister, I'm praying for you. Or, or just send them a note and say, I prayed for you in this area or something. Just don't be timid. Okay. Listen to Keith. <laughs> We're glad you joined us today. So thankful that you're a part. We'll pick up here with verse 12 next week. Until then, may God bless you as you strive to live for Him.